Hi, I'm Lucy, your narrator. Thanks for joining me for another video, and if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you. Before we get started, please kindly take a moment right now and click that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be alerted of every time I upload a new video. And also, please watch this video to the end to see the preview trailer and some behind-the-scenes photos. The Women is a subscriber-requested movie from James Popstar. Thank you for requesting it, and I hope you enjoy it. This movie is a comedy and drama. It was released in the USA in 1939, and it stars Norma Shearer, Joan Crawford, and Rosalind Russell. And some of their co-stars were Joan Fontaine, Butterfly McQueen, Marjorie Maine, Ruth Hussey, Hedda Hopper, Mary Boland, Paulette Goddard, Lucille Watson, and others. The movie is about a study of the lives and romantic entanglements of various interconnected women. And now I've got some behind-the-scenes tidbits for you. George Kukar was fired as director of Gone with the Wind in 1939, only a month before the women was scheduled to begin filming. Producer Hunt Strumberg enlisted Kukar's services immediately upon his sudden availability. In addition to its all-female cast, every animal that was used in the film, the many dogs and horses, were females as well. In addition, none of the works of art seen in the backgrounds were representative of the male form, except for the cartoon bull that appears in the picnic scene during the fashion sequence. The film's costume designer, Adrian, had his work cut out for him, dressing some of Hollywood's most glamorous leading ladies. In addition to the regular costumes for the film, he was also asked to create multiple high fashion gowns and outfits for a Technicolor fashion show scene that was to be inserted into the black and white film. Technicolor was still something of a novelty in 1939 and producer Hunt Stromberg wanted the fashion show to be an eye-popping, unexpected surprise for moviegoers. When all was said and done, Adrian had designed over 200 gowns for the cast of the film. And costume designer Adrian outbid himself with his fashion show outfits. They perfectly embraced and illustrated the late 30s era of bold and sleek new designs in all things. The world was coming out of a depression and demanded a new look across the board. Although the clothes now might seem a tad risque or avant-garde for that decade, it was a time when all things futuristic were embraced, from fashion to architecture to transportation and more. Sadly, this short-lived brave new world disappeared with the start of World War II. The beauty salon and spa featured in the film's opening sequence was based on cosmetics mogul Elizabeth Arden's parlor in New York City. At the premiere of the film, Arden scoffed that the film's salon was an exact copy of hers. The enormous square-cut ring Mary wears on her wedding ring finger at the film's start was the most expensive piece of jewelry in the film. Borrowed for filming, it was worth $1 hundred and seventy five thousand dollars and almost exactly like her character a young divorced Broadway vanities dancer named Miriam Ahrens Paulette Goddard had been a Ziegfeld Follies girl at age 13 divorced by age 20 in contrast the second of Goddard's four husbands was none other than Charles Chaplin, to whom she was married during the film's production. Well, barely, since they also got divorced the next year. Two actresses who appear in the women in uncredited speaking roles later became famous for their work in television sitcoms. The first actress appears after the dressing room fight between Crystal Allen and Mary Haynes playing a saleswoman who says, now she's in the soup. 
Her name is Marie Blake, and she is best known for playing Grandmama in The Adams Family from 1964 to 1966 under the name Blossom Rock. The other actress appears near the end of the film. She crosses through the ladies' lounge saying, What do they expect you to do, lay an egg? This beautiful young actress is Barbara Pepper, and she is best known for playing Doris Seffel in Green Acres from 1965 to 1968. Until divorce laws became less restrictive, the hospitality industry of Greater Reno catered to those who were awaiting divorce decrees. There were many guest ranches and motels that specifically offered long-term accommodations for this purpose. And no doubles were used in the fight sequence where Rosalind Russell bites Paulette Goddard. Despite the permanent scar resulting from the bite, the actresses remained friends. Yourself, you're going to die. Stephen Haynes is stepping out on Mary. But Sylvia, who told you? A manicurist? What? What girl? This Crystal Allen. Crystal Allen? Yes, you know, the girl who's hooked Mr. Haynes. Hey, what happened to the hot date you had on for tonight, darling? It's hotter than ever, dear. I'm having him dine at my place. About time he found out I was a home girl. Home girl? <laughs> Get her. Why don't you borrow the quintuplets for the evening? Because I'm all the baby he wants, Pet. Now's your chance to go in there and put an end to this thing, Mary. Go in there and just say a few quiet words. Tell her you'll make Stephen's life an absolute tornado <laughs> till he gives her up. Look where she was six months ago, and look where she is now. Sylvia, will you please let me do what I want to with my own life? You're very confident, aren't you? Yes, because I know Stephen couldn't love a girl like you. Well, if he couldn't, he's an awfully good actor. <laughs> Married, divorced, married, divorced. Oh. L'amour, l'amour. That's French for love. You should have licked that girl where she licked you. In his arms. It's where you win in the first round, and if I know men, it's still Custer's last stand. <laughs> my pet. I've made good with my husband. Is that the way to talk to me after all I've done for you? Oh, done what? You didn't know a soul when you married Stephen. After all, it wasn't easy to put you over. Stephen's fed up with the crystal in your heart. You know it. Yes, take my advice. You put your mind on your alimony. Alimony? With what Stephen can get on you, he won't have to give you a dime. like that one, we've got a lot more. Hotter than your morning coffee. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you would please kindly give me a like, comment below, share with others, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell to be alerted of every time I upload a new video. Please come back to see the next one. 
Until then, bye for now and be blessed.